Good morning, everyone. I light this Christ candle to represent during our service to represent the light of the Christ within each one of us. And we hold this and affirm this to be the truth. Except I can't reach the candle. So that's lit. It'll stay lit during the service. Now we invite the singing bowl to join us. So again, welcome to everyone to Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City. It's great to see all of you. I mean, I'm just so excited. This day is just such a neat day. The energy is just so, uh, to me, it's uplifting. The rain is uplifting to me. So um, the cloudy skies and just in this to be uplifted with the, the spirit of what lives and moves and has being in us and being here with all of you is a great way for me to experience that. Um, every, every, every day. So we're, um, we're uh, Sunday, December, I mean, uh, <laughs> December, uh, September the 27th, and I'm Ron Holdaway. It's great, again, great to see everyone. I'm just so excited about being here today. I hope you are too. We're going to do a couple songs, and uh, Bill's got a great talk going forward. I can't wait for that. Um, uh, following our uh, Nurture your, nurture your spiritual, uh, your divine spirit, nurturing your divine spirit. So we'll have a great, uh, great time together. So let's get started this morning first with a song by um, Faith Rivera. So, you know, we, sometimes we forget that we think we're all separate and we know that we're really not separate. We're all one. So let's, uh, let's celebrate that in this song by Faith Rivera. It's called Circle. Did you mute us? Leaning together, we know we're all on the same side. 
stars in this yes we're all stars in the circle of the big sky and that's something we're all each one of us are all stars in the big sky i just love that message for uh, during this time where we are so uh, thank you faith rivera for that song so i invite you now let's uh, open now with um, after the great message and song let's open with prayer so i invite you just to settle in just for a moment to pause and lift our eyes upward, not necessarily our outer eyes, but our inner eyes, rise into this higher consciousness to see, to remember, to acknowledge the one source that lives and moves and has being in all of us. We celebrate and ex open ourselves to this oneness, to this oneness of life, to this oneness of the one present. So we here today to celebrate the joy and the experience and the awareness and the magnificence, the wonder and all this one spirit that lives and moves and has been each one of us. We thank thee for each person, sweet spirit for each person on this call and in this spiritual community. Um, we give thanks for each person that is represented here today, not only in, on this call, but uh, afterwards as they're joining us electronically or through the technology of YouTube. So we're just grateful for all of these presence in this oneness. So in this presence of oneness, we give thanks and we say, thank you, thank you, thank you, sweet spirit. And so it is, amen. I'm going to share, I'm going to pull up. One of the things I've been thinking about a lot this week is about our five principles. We uh, sometimes, it, it reminded me of the um, the time when, you know, when you remember, most of us will remember when the alphabet was on little cards around the top of the, the top of the blackboard in our classrooms, you know, those that was to get that alphabet uh, embedded into us. And I asked my granddaughter about that and they don't do that in the classrooms anymore. I'm not sure why, but they, they don't. So they might have, they've got all these images about different things, different ways of teaching. But so I, re I remembered, um, it reminded me to always um, remember to uh, think about our five principles. So, um, and if, you know, it's the best way to describe who we are in unity. It's the, um, it's just the best way to remember uh, who we are. You can't see that right there. Probably it's too, can you see the five principles on my screen? So, um, in case you don't remember, or in case you just, well, that's for me, I just want to be always remember God is absolute good everywhere present. There's one power and one presence in the universe. God, the good omnipotent. And if God, if we use the word God, you know, we can use, substitute any word for whatever, any sacred name or holy name that represents that for you. Human beings have a spark of divinity within themselves. Their very essence is of God and therefore they all are all inherently good. Human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm, that's where we live right here, has its beginning in thought. Prayer is creative thinking that hyphens the connection with God mind and therefore brings forth wisdom, healing, prosperity, and everything good. Knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are not enough. A person must live the truth that he or she knows. In other words, we walk our talk. So remembering these five principles, you can uh, find them all over. You can even Google it on the internet. and It'll pop up and keep these close to you because it is the truth of, of what unity stands for. 
And I find that they are based on perennial wisdom and it's the best way of describing to you to remember ourselves and, and to uh, let other people know what unity is. So in our um, opportunity, Zoom oppor opportunities around our, our center, uh, spiritual community, uh, we have three particularly, and that's, uh, we, we have the, um, sorry about that, I clicked the wrong button. We have um, a Zoom uh, service on a course of miracles on uh, Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., facilitated by Rose Flora. Wednesday at nine o'clock, uh, 9 a.m., coffee and chat with me and everybody else in the spiritual community. And then Thursday, 11 a.m., meditation. I'll lead, a, lead us in a guided meditation. So join us for these opportunities. It's a great way to stay connected and just to be present and to be fully present with, uh, with your spiritual community. And I thank you all for joining and, and still being a part of this. Um, not as a way of announcement, because this is not coming from the board or anything like that, but I just had a sense this week that I can, I can see the, uh, I mean, I know there's a lot to go, but I can see us getting back to in-person activities at some point. Not, that doesn't mean next week or even by the end of the year, but I, can, I had at least had the hope and the vision that we will be getting back together. So hold that, um, hold that high watch for that with me. And I always uh, uh, remind you that I'm grateful. I'm so grateful and uh, the board is grateful. Our spiritual community is grateful for all of you. And just as a reminder, God has given us two hands, one for receiving, one for giving. And uh, so as you give, we, you receive and we know that. So bless you, bless you, bless you all for uh, re responding with your gifts and uh, to continue this ministry. We'll, uh, um, we're getting through the, uh, you know, their attendance is less obviously than meet when we meet in person, but uh, thanks to your giving, we're getting through and cause we'll need, uh, we need funds and resources as we, when we do come out of this and start in person meeting. So, so I'm so, so grateful. So um, I invite you to, if you, have any, another way we give and receive in unity is through affirmative prayer. So if you have any prayer requests, please send them to me, or you can send them to any other member, if you will, and ask for prayer, or you can go online uh, at unity.org and, uh, and submit your prayer requests directly to Silent Unity. If you send them to me, I'll hold them in prayer here. Uh, we all collectively do, you know, it's all one consciousness, we hold them in prayer. And then I'll send them off to Silent Unity where they're held in prayer for 30 days. So please take advantage of that and don't miss the opportunity to uh, the opportunity to uh, share your prayer prayers uh, request with us. So with that said, it's time for our daily word. We uh, we transition today, and you know if you've looked ahead, you know Bill's. Uh, talk coming up in a few minutes is about forgiveness. So you might figure that the daily word would be about, uh, have something to do with forgiveness. And it does. So um, if you would just listen to these words and it's very powerful and listen to these words uh, as we prepare to still our hearts and mind and think about this uh, spiritual uh, tool that we call forgiveness. I forgive and see the divinity of others. I forgive and see the divinity of others. As long as I exist in this human experience, resentments, fears, and negative judgments may be a part of my journey. I dissolve these negative reactions when I choose to know the divinity of others and myself. In doing so, I am discovering and expressing my spiritual purpose. The bottom line spiritual purpose for everyone is discovering and expressing their divine identity. One key to fulfilling this purpose is forgiveness. Seeing from the perspective of our innate spiritual nature, free from the illusions of this mortal world, from the perspective of our divine identity, we expand the expression of love every day. We see only the divinity of others. Today I forgive. I joyfully, joyfully release any resentments, fears, or negative judgments I may hold concerning others, particularly myself. I see the divinity of others by, doing, by knowing my divinity first. I see 
and forgive the divinity of others. I forgive and see the divinity of others. Repeat that with me if you would. In your, I forgive and see the divinity of others. And so it is. Now, uh, as we prepare a little deeper for meditation, I'll share with you a song with uh, from uh, Karen Drucker. And I think this will be a, a good a good prelude into uh, into meditation. So you can you can watch on the screen for a few minutes because there's some slides and you can watch that and uh, enjoy that as you uh, pretend to begin to still your hearts and mind. Let's see, let me get the right one up here. Just a minute. you to uh, sit comfortably in your chair or your sofa or your the bed wherever you are and 
uh, while you're here with us. And just let's begin with a time of uh, silence and coming apart and going within. So if it's comfortable, you can close your outer eyes and just be. Begin our time in this silent meditation with breathing. Just breathe in deeply. Feel your body rise up. And then as you exhale, rest and just release. Another deep breath in and just release. And one more breath. One more deep breath in and then just release and relax and rest. Fully, fully relax. There's nothing to do. Just be. There is only love. There is only love. The words by Karen Drucker touch the core of who we are. Rest in this truth. There is only one life. That life is God. That life is love. That life is my life, your life, right now. Set in this silence and this quietness to just recenter our thoughts, to remember and to awaken to this presence that lives and moves and has being in us. This presence of boundless, boundless love. Take another deep breath in, and as you do, just relax even deeper as you exhale. And just relax. Give yourself this gift, this opportunity to just be for a few moments in the silence. Just rest. I'll watch the time. And you just rest in the silence.
There is only love. There is only love. And you and I are that love. All the love that exists in the universe flows in and through us every day, every minute of every day. As we express this love, this universal love that's given to us, we change the world as we express this love. And we always remember to express this love that we are. Now I invite you to take a deep breath in. Begin moving your body. Another deep breath in and exhale. Roll your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're comfortable, you can open your outer eyes to be fully present in this time and place. We say, thank you, thank you, thank you, sweet spirit. Amen, and so it is. You're, I'm not sure whether it was the meditation or the clouds or the rain, but you guys look like you were thoroughly enjoying that. <laughs> so that's good then to be able to uh, set for just a few moments. We don't set long enough to uh, we sit with the TV on or something going on in our head. So uh, that was that was good for me too. So uh, this is what we've all been expecting all week. Uh, we've been looking forward with anticipation to Bill Warner's uh, talk that's coming up. Uh, Bill, where did you go? Let's see, did Bill go away somewhere? I'm right here. Okay, there you are. Okay, so Bill Warner is going to uh, continue our uh, our talks from Nurture Your Divine Spirit from our booklet. So, Bill, let us hear about forgiveness. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> one of the nice things about Zoom that I find is that uh, on days like today, when it's nice and gray and rainy, you don't have to go out. So, uh, but anyway, welcome. And uh, I hope I can come halfway to the expectation of what has been presented here. Uh, Ron does this to me every week. <clears throat> He's setting me up for failure. I know he is. Oh no. It's not only that. through failure that you can grow. So that's mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. Uh, but this week in our booklet, we're going to talk about forgiveness. Now, uh, as a child, uh, I used to pray every night for a bicycle. But then I came to realize that God doesn't work like that. So I stole a bike and now I pray for forgiveness. No, I, I never did that. I never did that. <laughs> It's just the way of getting going here. Um, but to be truthful, uh, my whole adult life, practically, forgiveness has only been about being the bigger person, uh, being the first to reconcile or to let bygones be bygones. But for the last 20 years or so, I've been getting more and more into religion and spirituality and and I find that definitions for forgiveness are, are a little bit different uh, within religion. Uh, for example, uh, Christianity. Uh, forgiveness is, in Christianity is, is based on the belief that God forgives sin through faith in the anointing sacrifice, atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And therefore, because we have been saved, because Christians have been saved, that uh, we should then pass it on, as it were, and forgive others. So in Christianity, forgiveness is kind of like something you just pass on to somebody else. Uh, forgiveness in Buddhism is a little different. It's a central concept. Uh, the understanding forgiveness is essential 
to nirvana, which is that ultimate state of compassion and wisdom that all Buddhists hope to attain. Uh, and this state of compassion is not saying, I forgive you. Your forgiveness should be such that the person who is forgiven does not even know that you are forgiving them. They should not even feel guilty about their mistake. This, the Buddhists, the Buddhists say, is real compassion. Now, forgiveness in the Hindu tradition is considered one of their six cardinal virtues. The theological basis for forgiveness in Hindu Dharma is that a person who does not forgive carries a baggage of memories of the wrong, of the negative feelings, of anger and unresolved emotions that affect their present as well as their future. Now, one of the things that I have really come to love about unity is that we tend to embrace a lot of these aspects in our definition of forgiveness. You see, for us, forgiveness, and it's quoted here in the booklet, is an act of releasing ourselves from the bondage of an ongoing negative connection. We forgive to reclaim our equilibrium and to resurrect our peace of mind. But let us take one more step. Let us consider what we were studying this time last year in Emily Cady's Lessons in Truth. For in that book it says, to forgive does not simply mean to arrive at a place of indifference to those who do you personal injury. It means far more than this. To forgive is to give for, to give some actual definite good in return for the evil given. We need to affirm good for that person in our prayers. Let me illustrate with a story about a pretty remarkable man. His name is John. John Dorenboss is his full name. Today he is a very successful motivational and inspirational speaker who uses magic tricks to emphasize his message. Now, if this name, John Dorenboss, is familiar to you, then you either watch Ellen on a regular basis, have seen the last couple years of America's Got Talent, or are a Philadelphia Eagles football fan. Because John has done all three of those things. But his story really starts in 1992, when he was 12. <clears throat> or it was on August of that year that he came home to find that his father had murdered his mother. Now his father, turned himself in, was convicted, sentenced to 13 years. And John was sent to live with an aunt. Now, in the intervening years between 1992 and 2018, John has neither spoken nor seen his father. He hasn't wanted to. But while he was with his aunt in those first years, uh, he had an adjustment to make, obviously. And a family friend introduced him to the discipline of doing magic. And he found that this was helping him in dealing with this situation of not having his mother or father around. And he used it so effectively that he, he applied it, those, those, that discipline of magic, 
to his football skills, and he became a professional NFL football player. Now, after seven years of playing football, he was traded from the Philadelphia Eagles to the um, New Orleans Saints, I think it was. And during a routine physical, the, uh, a medical problem was discovered. He required open heart surgery to fix it, and his NFL days were over. So he concentrated now on his other skill, his magic tricks. And he became a first class magician. He was actually a finalist in America's Got Talent. I think he finished third, second or third. But it was during that final performance that he announced to the world that he and his wife were expecting their first child. And he also discovered that he was going to be a father and he hadn't yet come to terms with his own father. He had never in all those times ever said to his father, I forgive you. So he set up a meeting after 27 years. They met for coffee. Uh, he didn't want anything real formal. And they greeted, shook hands, sat down, started talking. And he eventually got to the point where he asked his father, why? And his father's answer was as shocking as it was revealing. His father answered, sometimes you have to do things and I don't back down. His father did not show any remorse for the killing of his wife, for the taking of the life of John's mother. And John realized right then and there that there was nothing that he was going to be able to do to change his dad. So the visit ended pretty much at that point. And John walked away without saying, I forgive you. Later in an interview, John would say that while he didn't forgive his father for taking mom, his mom away, he did forgive him for being lost. Now, what did he mean by being lost? Well, you see, John had, had lived through and fully understood the six universal principles of forgiveness. Principle number one, it's okay to get angry. John was very angry that first year. Every time he would hear dishes rattle in the kitchen or a door close or a car pull up into the driveway, is the first immediate reaction was mom. And then when it wasn't, obviously, he would get angry. But he eventually moved on to step number two, which is that it's not okay to cling to your anger. And it was the, the introduction to magic that helped him get there. Because he says there's a, a discipline to learning magic. It, you have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it in order to make it seem so natural and and, and magical. And that kept him focused away from his anger. He also used those same repetitive skills in his football, which made him a much better football player, which got him to the point where he could do that as a profession. So he used it to refocus. 
And then he was ready for step three. And step three is the first real step in forgiving others. And that step is simply to realize that they needed to do that. This may go against all apparent logic, and it certainly goes against the rage in your stomach. And you may have been angry for so long that, you, that, that that rage feels natural. But we need to reframe our accusations and our condemnations in this way. They needed to do that. Impossible as it may seem, because once you get that idea and get used to that idea that the terrible misdeeds and our terrible actions weren't entirely personal. John's mother's murder was not done to directly hurt John. He was collateral damage. When you realize that you were not the primary victim, that the acts weren't aim specifically and maliciously at you, well, then you're ready for the next step, step four. And step four is a hard one. Because step four, you re, you, you're recognizing that it was the best that they could do at that moment. When you realize that they needed to do it for their own convoluted, unforgiving reasons, then this principle comes a little bit easier to take. It doesn't mean that we're condoning or excusing them. It means that we realize that at the moment of the unforgivable action, their level of maturity allowed them to act in the best way they knew how. Another way of saying that their actions weren't entirely directed at you. In fact, they could have acted no differently. As horrible as the action may have seemed to you, given where they were in their development and how they handled the circumstances, they were doing the very best they could. John's father's answer to why he killed his mother speaks to this very principle. Remember, he said, sometimes you have to do things, and I don't back down. Forgiveness is not about condoning bad behavior or saying that we must trust those who have mistreated us. It does not mean that there is no justice for bad acts. John's father spent 13 years and eight months in jail. But it prepares us, these first four steps, for what we, what is to come in step five. Excuse me a second. Step five is that what was done simply missed the mark. Now, I'm going to bring in a little religion here. In Jesus' day, he spoke Aramaic, and the word for sin in Aramaic could also be translated as error or mistake. And author and unity minister Eric Butterworth, we know him, he writes that sin is only missing the mark. As we forgive others their mistakes, we also forgive ourselves. In other words, whenever you see someone else as guilty, you are reinforcing your own sense of guilt and unworthiness. You cannot forgive yourself unless you are willing to forgive others. It does not matter what you think anyone has done to you in the past or what you think you may have done to somebody. Only through forgiveness can you release your guilt and fear completely, which brings us to step six. Continued resentment and blame, especially if not faced, hurts only yourself. Dr. Fred Luskin, 
co-founder and director of the Stanford University Forgiveness Project, paints a very graphic picture when he says, by carrying around these truths, you are letting the person who harmed you continue to inflict new bruises. You're renting space to him in your head. John Dorenboss wanted, needed to face his father, to relive the pain in order to know that he was over it. He forgave his father for who he is, but not for what he'd done. And that was enough for John to know that he was now free to be the kind of father that he wants for his daughter. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You can let it define you, you can let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. John, Doran Boss is an example of letting it strengthen. This human experience presents us with many challenges and we succeed best and are happiest when we live to our divine spirit within. Instead of my normal blessing at the end, I, what I want to do is, is read from our booklet the forgiveness affirmation that Reverend Bill Englehart has published here. And it simply says, I forgive myself for my mistakes and I forgive others for their mistakes, knowing none of us is perfect. Thank you for your kind attention today. Please stay well and stay safe. And as always, namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bill. I don't think anyone would ever agree with me that I'm setting you up for failure because you never did. So uh, thank you for that, that inspiring message. Uh, you you challenge me uh, every every time I have to talk, Rod. Challenge yes, challenge yes. Um, but you're so good at it. So thank you for the lessons that you give us, and uh, mostly from coming from the heart. That's what uh, that's what we uh, get from you, Bill. So thank you very much. Wow, take a deep breath and just feel that all the truth that uh, Bill spoke to us and. It is one of the journeys that we have in our in this uh, in this manifestation of what we call being human. So uh, I think I'll be watching this. This may be an all time hit too, Bill, because everybody's going to go to this and uh, go back to this and say, "Now, what were those six points again?" So we may get those again. Maybe we can even talk about that, unpack that on Wednesday if you like. So uh, at our call in a coffee and chat on Wednesday. So again, thank you. Okay. So it's, uh, it's raining again at my house and this is good. This, uh, like Bill said, Zoom, we can, we can uh, just stay in and enjoy each other and have a few minutes together and um, uh, drink our coffee uh, while we're being together. So it, it's, uh, uh, so we can share those um, uh, benefits, if you will, of Zoom, even though the big loss is that we're not together. So I invite you to stay safe, be well, as Bill says, and um, we'll see you again on all the many Zoom op opportunities. Is there anybody having a birthday this week or uh, coming up in September that I have, may have missed, we have missed? Um, I think we've gotten everybody so far in September, if you can believe it, is almost over. Um, so this week will be we hit October 1st on Thursday, so it's pretty amazing. So at this point, I'm going, we can end our service. I'm going to, uh, uh, you can unmute yourself. I'll try to, uh, no, it won't let me unmute you. So you'll have to unmute yourself as we join together.
we usually do in the uh, uh, prayer for protection. So I'll uh, I'll say each the first I'll say the line and then you can repeat it with me. The prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. As we end our service, I'll blow out the Christ yes. people. And we know our Christ light continues to burn. Even though I've, this symbolic uh, symbol of our Christ light I've just uh, extinguished, we know that uh, it goes on and lives forth in us every day and every moment of the day. But thank you for joining us. I'm going to end the service by uh, stopping the recording.